Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. Uh, so this is my uh, motor si motorized bicycle. Um, my first one I built. I think it's pretty cool. Got really intrigued by this whole idea um, through YouTube and then also th uh, through uh, just kind of searching around on Amazon. And that's why I bought the um, motorized bike uh, kit. They're usually about, I don't know, about $125 US. And you can either get the 49cc or the uh, slightly larger um, 80cc, which is marketed as an 80cc, but it's actually, um, according to the reading that I've done, a uh, 66cc engine. So anyhow, uh, this is uh, the bike. It started off as a old Ross uh, beach cruiser. Kind of cool bike you know and i actually had this engine on my um trek road bike over there and uh with the skinny tires so i had that one already and i wanted to get something up and running just uh i don't know because i was anxious and i did have the engine on the trek uh and rode it around the block a couple times that kind of thing and it, I do not recommend at all um, putting this type of uh, configuration with the motorized bicycle on um, any kind of bike that has those skinny tires or that is very rigid. It is really just not forgiving at all. Um, through my research and then just kind of common sense, uh, just determined that um, you know these beach cruiser style bikes with the uh, larger style um, tires are just so much more forgiving and I think they're actually safer too because those skinny tires if it you know if you were to go out and it would be like wet on the road or there would be some leaves or maybe some guys cutting his grass and gets grass clippings in the street um, can be kind of hazardous so anyhow that's my two cents about why I chose the beach style uh, bike so it was um, form and function um, I just really liked the style of these bikes. Um, also, the seat is much more forgiving. I know you can technically, you know, change the seat out if you wanted to, but, you know, the seat on my Trek is, uh, I just can't even imagine going over bumps and stuff in the road with that sucker on there. That would really just be uncomfortable. So let me go over the bike a little bit. Like, as I said, this is a Ross Beach Cruiser. I bought it off of Craigslist. Uh, an older couple actually had two of them for sale for, uh, there's the one I bought for my wife. It was a twofer. So she doesn't get an engine on hers, but, uh, and she doesn't want one. So it was uh, two for 150 bucks. I didn't even negotiate with them because it was in really good shape. Uh, as a bonus, what I discovered too is that the spokes on these, at least this beach cruiser, which I think is probably a little bit of a nicer quality beach cruiser um, than you would get maybe than the ones at Walmart or Target. I don't know for sure. Uh, don't mean to slander them at all, but the spokes, and you can see the sprocket right here, actually bolts in and then as the chain puts, puts tension on the sprocket, it actually transfers that energy through these bolts in this little um, seam connection here to the um to the sp uh, uh what do you call it these the spokes so um it this sprocket is not attached to the main hub of the wheel where i'm pointing here it's actually attached through this little mechanism which is sandwiched together um kind of like a, a clutch pad would be in your transmission and it transfers all the energy going around in a circle through the spokes up into the wheel. So having this like extra size diameter spokes, um, and these are, I don't know if you can actually tell, but these are actually really thick ones. I, I, the, these are the thickest ones I've ever seen anyway, other than going to, you know, kind of a BMX style solid um, spoke kit. Um, but from what I understand, those spokes can actually, uh, bend over time just because of the pressure and stuff that you're you know putting on on the spokes so the thicker diameter uh, the thicker gauge spokes hold up a lot longer 
um, and do a better job than the thinner gauge spoke. So that's something you might want to consider. Um, this is uh, some questions that I've actually seen from posting it on my Facebook account are, is this um, a legal um, motorized bike or a moped? Technically, I'm in Ohio. Ohio law does state that these motorized bikes are technically mopeds. They have to be under under 50 cc's, have a certain brake horsepower, can't go more than 20 miles an hour. You fill out a form at the BMV and you say yes, yes, yes to all of them, and basically you're right. So, I mean, I, I don't know if you're going downhill, I guess maybe you can go a little over 20 miles an hour, but, you know, and some of these things can go pretty fast depending on how you have them set up. So, um, the installation is... Uh, Pretty straightforward as far as I can tell. I did a couple mods and I'll get into that. Um, but the way you get it, you get this uh, kit, which is essentially the engine. Um, you get the, uh, what do you call it, handles here. And on the other side, you get the handles. You do not get the um, extra brakes with the kit. You do get the tank, which is kind of cool. And you get everything that goes from the tank here down into the carb. You get a nice little full fuel filter. Comes with the, the fuel line. Comes with the on-off. Comes with the uh, mounting brackets for a tank. Comes with the engine. Comes with the spark plug. Comes with the magneto or whatever this is called here. And also comes with the... Um, uh, down there, sorry about that. Comes with the uh, muffler. So it does come with a chain guard as well. I have not installed that yet. Uh, it comes with a chain, although this is an upgraded chain. It does come with a chain, comes with the sprocket, and it comes with that little sandwich um, mechanism to hold the sprocket onto the wheel. And it comes with this little tensioner here as well for the chain. So <clears throat> comes with all that stuff. Um, and like I said, installation was pretty straightforward, um, especially on these beach cruiser bikes. Um, back here, I actually took out these um, threaded bolts and I went down to Ace Hardware and got a couple different threaded bolts to make a better attachment and I put those in with um, uh, blue um, locking uh, liquid uh, thread lock on, on there just to make sure that they don't move around. And I like to put like a little electrical tape. <clears throat> So you can see a little electrical tape right in there. And I put that in just as a little bit of an extra um, vibration. I also put in mine, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Get a little piece of rubber. This is actually uh, cut from a piece of, I actually happen to have it here, vinyl um, baseboard molding that you might see in like a commercial um, or cheap residential bathroom. This will go on a wall like that. But it's black and it's vinyl and it's kind of like rubberized material. Provides that kind of like cushion a little bit, a little bit vibratory, can protect your paint too. And it's only like a dollar fifty at your local um, uh, Home Depot or whatever. They have it in stock. So that's what I went with. I didn't have any rubber sitting around. Unfortunately, I do have a bunch of other crap though. So, um, so the back installation of the motor itself was pretty straightforward, although I did add that little piece of vinyl, which kind of provides a little bit of vibratory um, support, I guess, um, for the back of the engine. And the front of the engine, I did do this part here, it has a U. It does come with a uh, mounting bracket that you can fit uh, around um, the main structure of the bicycle. I chose not to do that. It did not fit that well. It also has a universal mount, which is this plate right here, and then you can see the holes, and these holes are meant to hold a universal bracket that, went ar that goes around the main bottom pipe of the bicycle. I also chose not to use that, and here's the reason why. When I had it on my track, I noticed that the engine was kind of racking a little bit this way because the chain and the working part of the engine is on the left-hand side of the bike 
and it wanted to pull toward this side of the bike. So in order to rectify that situation, see here, okay, there we go. See this bolt here and this bolt here? I actually just drilled holes right through the frame of the bike and then bolted those two bolts to the plate, okay? And I just drilled those in um, with a metal bit, uh, with your standard, um, you know, drill gun. And those two bolts going right through with the exact size hole to match the exact size bolt um, really keeps that engine sturdy. I mean, this engine, there's no movement at all in this engine in terms of rocking back and forth. I was moving the bike a little bit. Um, but the engine itself is just so stable that way. And I haven't seen anybody else do that. Um, so the reason that they have these different types of mounting situations here in the front of the engine is that different manufacturers have different dimensions for this main part of the lower um, structure of the bike, the actual frame of the bike. Some can be kind of oblong, some can, can be really fat, some can be like, you know, more narrow. So if you can see this part of the bike superstructure is actually smaller than this. See how this one, there we go. You can kind of see it here. See how this one is a nice smaller rounder tube and then it transitions on this to more of an oblong larger tube. Well, that works really good for the back um, stock application, but it doesn't really work that great for the front. So I wanted to do something about that and that, that was my solution. And let me tell you, it works great. There is no problems whatsoever. Um, put in two holes through here. I put a little extra um, silicone or something in there to protect it just in case any water got in to prevent it from uh, rusting long term. Um, but I don't think you'll have a problem with that. So one of the other mods I did um, was I got a heavy duty chain. This is the heavy duty chain that you can get like on Amazon or one of the other kind of bike stores. Bikeberry, I think is one of the other popular ones, but I think I just did Amazon Prime just in case it didn't work, I could send it back. Um, so I found that the heavy duty chain is much more reliable. When you do the setup with the sprocket and the chain, this is kind of important. I haven't really heard anybody else say this. I found that having the chain parallel as much as possible from the top part of the chain to the bottom part of the chain as it enters the sprocket is, op is desired, is desirable, okay? And the reason that if you have this lower chain coming down and then over or at some other kind of angle, you could pop that chain or that chain could have a little bit of a problem going through the sprocket in here. It could rub and it could actually cause a failure. <clears throat> right here is the link. You want to have the link with the closed part of the uh, link going back towards the sprocket. So you can see the open part of the link is right there and right there. So that's important, not only for the operation of the chain, but it's important for, um, it kind of complements that parallel part of how you actually have the chain coming in and out of that sprocket. You don't want to have any of those failures when you're you know, out motoring around and you're you know, 10, 20 miles out away from the house and then you have a chain failure. That would really suck. So I find that this setup right here is works really, really good, okay? One of the other mods I had to do was I actually had to get the grinder and kind of just uh, grind away this part of the fender to make room for the chain. It's really tight tolerance in there. They do make on the sprocket. This is how you want to have your sprocket placed. You want to have the bevel out, okay? So uh, of, of the sprocket and that will bring it away that will bring it away from the spokes and give it a little bit more room. The, these sprockets actually have a little bevel to them, okay? So you wanna have the chain further away from the inside of the, um, uh, inside of the wheel. I'll go around. You can see how it's beveled in there. See that? 
you want to have that facing that way. So uh, installation of this other little piece right here is pretty simple. They just like bolt together and you know make sure you put your lock washers in there make that nice and tight. It's pretty simple. Follow instructions. This bike, a um, couple mods I did. Uh, I did add this little uh, light right here. That's cool for nighttime. I don't know, it was like 10 bucks off of Amazon. I do have a front light that goes um, on the bike. And when I was putting on the, it um, goes right there. It's kind of cool. It's an old style look, you know, a little bit of a light to it. So I just haven't uh, bolted it on yet because of the new um, brake system that I installed and um, I guess I didn't plan ahead I got excited so I'll have to finish bolting that on but so this bicycle actually was a coaster brake bicycle I removed the coaster brake and for those of you that don't know what a coaster brake is that's when you it's kind of like old school when you were a kid you had a little BMX bike and you push backwards on the pedals so it, there's no handbrakes you know that was coaster brake you know you could do burnouts and skids and stuff like that it's cool Anyhow, I did not want that because I didn't want any chance of any bindings or something like that. I just wanted that back wheel to be able to move freely and then under the power of the engine. I didn't want to have any problems with a brake system failure or anything like that. So I had to actually add um, handbrakes. This bike did not come with handbrakes. It's aftermarket. No handbrakes whatsoever. And just ordered a pair of these uh, calipers. You want to get a longer pair if you do... The beach style bicycle, this is a pretty long dimension here, so you want to get the longer pair, like I think the description was like 76 to 92 millimeters, something like that. But just make sure it's the longer pair of brakes that will come all the way down to here, because that's quite a bit of a distance, and the tire is wider too, okay? But what I really, 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 and I have that on the back as well, they come in a matching pair, all right? You can just run the, the cords. Uh, but I really highly, highly, highly recommend this double um, one-sided handbrake. This operates the front and the back brake at the same time. So let's see if I can get both of them. They both close and open at the same time. And the reason I really, really recommend that is, A, two brakes are better than one. You don't want to just have one brake, okay? But... If you were to have the other brake on this side, which is the clutch lever, lever um, it is extremely difficult and very unsafe to operate this bike when it's under the power of the engine, in my opinion, because you would have not only the clutch uh, lever, but also another brake lever over there, and you wouldn't be able to stop. Um, if you, if you had your hand on the clutch and the brake at the same time, it would be really almost impossible. So I opted, got this aftermarket part again from Amazon. There's lots of different sellers out there that do that. Um, in Ohio, it's actually a requirement that you have to have a rear facing, uh, um, mirror on your bike in order to get your tag. Uh, so that actually came with the bike. Uh, my wife's bike has one too. It just uh, came with it. It's kind of a nifty little one, and um, you can move it around. But you know, if, it does, if your bike doesn't come with it, you can. There's tons of other little, you know, aftermarket um, mirrors that are for sale, like at bike places and Amazon or Walmart, those kind of places. So um, these are the stock handles that go on both sides. The gas is kind of cool. Just uh, throttles up like that. Kill switch is right here. Got my double brakes there and my clutch over on the left-hand side where it should be. So, um, you know, one of the other tips that I found is when you're installing this Magneto, they recommend that you um, do not use the um, bolts that come with it because this is plastic. This box right here, which uh, contains the electrical cutoff um, from the engine, is plastic. It also sends a signal then to the... Uh, spark plug so just put that on with a zip tie and you're good it's nice and solid you can see i'm kind of trying to move it around and it doesn't move so um so i that's a good advice zip tie goes faster you don't need to bolt that down uh, you do need to bolt down 
the underside of the uh, gas can, gas tank, and it just has standard kind of little clips under there. I decided to use the uh, two nut method and also a lock washer because there is quite a bit of a vibration. Um, so in order to keep that in there, I did that method. It's nice and tight. You don't want to over tight that too much because these little bolts are actually, sorry, these little bolts are actually connected to uh, the bottom of the tank. You don't want to rip that out of there. It'll be awful. That'd be a catastrophic failure. So, so I did that, but I also, again, maybe a little over engineering. I put that little piece of uh, black, you know, rubberized vinyl material, just cut it to size. You can do that with a uh, exact an eye for a little construction, you know, um, razor knife that you have and put that underneath there and provides a nice snug fit and also reduces the vibration as well because this sucker kicks out some vibration, let me tell you. Okay, so um, this is the stock, um, uh, what do you call it, a carburetor. It's okay. Um, so this little uh, screw right here is where you set the throttle. You can either turn it one way or the other to set the throttle. This is the primer button. You can just push push that in several several times. Sorry, again, several times and uh, primes it. And I recommend that you do that before you start it. Uh, and then over on the other side, you can set this lever here uh, on the uh, carburetor, and that's that's your choke. Okay, uh, and until you get it warm, you're gonna have to have it on full choke and probably full choke for a little while, especially when you have that extra rich gas solution. So it's a two stroke engine. You wanna put some you know, um, oil in with the gasoline according to the proper recommendation. I'm still on my first uh, couple tanks on the break-in period of the bike, which is a few tanks. So the other bottle that you uh, may have noticed is this one right here. This is kind of a cool little device. I was a little skeptical um, just because I don't really have a lot of experience with two-stroke motors. Um, two-stroke, uh, for those of you who don't know, is the configuration. There's just one piston inside the engine that goes up and down. There's a port here that lets in gas and oil and air. And then on the other side of the piston, there's actually a little hole that lets out the exhaust. So. Um, as opposed to a four-stroke engine, which you do not mix the oil and the gas together inside the same mixture. It's, they're, they operate under different principles, although they, although they do are both uh, internal combustion engines. So um, these are a little, little temperamental, the two-strokes. They're kind of like most of your weed-eater engines. And there is a blowback problem that occurs in the manifold right here, okay? And what happens is on the upstroke and downstroke, it creates a little bit of a back pressure here and then also a little bit of pressure going forward. That's why on a lot of dirt bikes, you'll see the mufflers kind of have like a bow to it. You're like, wow, why is that muffler not straight or why is that muffler not uniform looking? Kind of looks like a, kind of a cornucopia style, you know, where one end is larger than the other, kind of like almost like a, a funnel type style. That's actually a built-in expansion chamber, and that's to compensate for the failure of the two-stroke engine design. So, with that nerdy explanation behind us, this is called a boost bottle. And what the boost bottle does is, this is just hollow in here. There's no valve or anything like that, it's just a chamber. And I made this actually out of an uh, uh, inch and a half um, white uh, Schedule 40 PVC two standard caps on either side, okay? And I just spray painted that black, and it looks badass. And then, uh, in the same aisle at Home Depot, had a threaded um, nipple, and they come in a lot of different sizes. What I recommend is you actually just take your tube with you to Home Depot, or if you're buying this tube at Home Depot or whatever, I don't know if this is this fish tube from my daughter's aquarium, I forget where I got that. I think it is. I think that's this aquarium air tube right there. Um, and I had it laying around and I decided just to put it to good use. So uh, take that tube with you and match the actual nipple size on the male side of the nipple, okay? 
and it has kind of like a little barbs there and then I just zip tie it for just to keep it on there. But you just thread that in there, you drill a hole, thread it in there, put some uh, you know seal lock or something like that, maybe even some silicone or whatever when you're threading that in there, make it nice and secure so it's airtight in here. And down here, um, I've been experimenting. I, ha I bought a tap and die set, which um, can create threads. If nobody's familiar with tap and die, it's, I, I have no idea how I did not live longer without that tap and die set. But you actually just drill a hole in metal right here into the manifold and you can put in this little nipple here, which I got off of my air compressor uh, kit. This is an extra nipple. And again, you have the little barbs right there. You just put the end of the hose there. And that acts as the expansion chamber to compensate for the failure or the inherent design flaw. I'm not going to say failure. It's an inherent design flaw of the two-stroke engine. And what that does is instead of pushing back the air-fuel mixture back into the carburetor and creating a vacuum problem, it has an expansion area um, where the pressure and air fuel mixture is pushed up in here and then back inside of the chamber. Let me tell you, that actually works. It's unbelievable how it works, but it does. And it works really, really, really well. Um, Google um, or YouTube a search for um, boost bottles and you can get into it in more detail. Uh, just one little extra tip on that. You should try to match the size um, in terms of cubic centimeters to, of the boost bottle to the size of your engine. So it doesn't have to be an exact science. I've seen some people make it like out of old, um, you know, those kind of like aluminum Budweiser cans. I've seen some people make some homemade ones that way. I just like the look of the PVC. Kind of looks like a little bomb or something on there. It just looks, I think it looks cool. So, and also I'm used to dealing with that, that type of product as well from doing plumbing. So it works really well. So one last thing I, I did add, uh, there is no gas gauge to this thing. I mean, I guess you could take off your cap and see how much gas you have, but being a two stroke engine, once again, it has to be a properly mixed ratio of oil to gasoline and you might be out on a ride somewhere one day and you run out of gas you know you're cruising along and you putt putt you're out so what i did is um uh my daughter had a um water bottle that was given away to her at a lo local water park it's actually kind of cool it's metal aluminum i think i don't know um yeah i think it is aluminum and it uh, you know said the name of the water park on there, Kalahari, and it came with a little a different um, top on it that had like a little compass on it. It was kind of cool and a little carabiner. It was neat. They never used it. They didn't like the taste of the metal in the water for some reason, um, so they never used them. But I always thought they were handy. So what I did is I just took a standard old um, uh, water bottle holder off of one of my old bikes. And again, I did tap and die into um, the frame. Uh, get a tap and die set. Oh my God, it just makes everything so much more professional um, and so much more secure. And um, secured that uh, just standard, you know, Walmart type of water bottle holder to the frame, uh, painted, uh, this red, because it is gasoline, you don't want anybody to drink off of that, um, and then just painted, hand painted uh, the word gas on there. And then I went to Home Depot, and this is just actually a three quarter size um, uh, cap, what they call that a bung, I'm not sure what they call that exactly, um, and I just uh, just painted that black, but that's, just, that's a, uh, like a PVC cap three-quarter size, I believe, um, just again from Home Depot, which is closest to me. No offense to Lowe's. I just prefer Home Depot. Um, so uh, so that's basically it. Really cool. These things are super fun. Um, I'm about 180 pounds, you know, 5'10". And, uh, you know, you got to pedal this a little bit to get it started, kickstart, that type of thing, or rolling start, no kickstart. Um, and it, it runs 
just like it should be. Having a lot of fun with it. Uh, I see some people that are driving around without license tags. That's illegal. At least in Ohio, it's illegal. I'm an attorney, so that's the last thing I need is to be given a ticket. You also need insurance for this. 